ETU wrestling fans. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. Although I was not in attendance, I was watching live on IWTV as they presented Lightning in a Bottle, ETU's first offering for 2023 from the Mecca in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. The show opened up with a multi multi-man match as we saw uh Kevin Blackwood versus the finisher Steve Pen Pena versus the prize Alec Price versus Cash Flow Ken Broadway. Uh oh my god. I know I, I can't write every bit and piece of this down. I'm trying to figure out what did I write here. Oh in the early going price uh Hurricane Rana's Broadway. Pena hit an exploder suplex on Price. Price retaliated, I think, with an Inzagiri. Um, maybe it was on Pena or Broadway. And then he hit a... Somebody hit a cutter. Or an ace crasher. Uh, actually... No, actually, Price did an Inzagiri on Ken Broadway. Hit a cutter and then gave a destroyer like DDT. D -D -D. Pena had a fisherman buster on Price. Broadway and Blackwood had a slugfest. Broadway low blowed Blackwood and gave him a stalling German suplex and pinned, pinned him, enabling cash flow Ken Broadway to defeat Kevin Blackwood, Steve Pena, and Alec Price. Next up was a women's match as we saw the debuting Ultraviolet do battle with the international pop sensation Becca. Becca had the early advantage. Uh, Ultra eventually hit a backhand or back fist. Uh, they both double pump kicked each other and they were both down. Ultra used a stalling German suplex but I think Becca kicked out of that. Becca hit a, a TKO and she put Ultra Violet away with a Moonsault off the second rope, enabling Becca to defeat Ultraviolet. I think these two ladies clicked very nicely, and in this one, hopefully, Ultraviolet gets to come back to ETU in the future. Becca, of course, mm -hmm. uh, had was defeated by Billy Starks back at We Don't Belong Here, the one-year anniversary show back in December. So, you know, hopefully, both ladies will return in the future. Up next was one of the most hyped matches on the show as we saw Danny DeMonto go one-on-one -on -one with the indie god, Matt Cardona. Cardona had come out with two championship belts and along the way he, uh, he encounters Mittens where he gives him the bird and he pushes him down. Uh, Cardona gets, does a promo in the ring. Uh, he refers to the indies as shindies and Cardona said he was willing to put up the Chris Jericho Oceanic Championship which is one of the belts he brought to the ring on the line against Danny in this match so they the, the match starts they have a they brawl into the crowd at one point D'Amato atomic Cardona's Cardona's on the on the guardrail Cardona used a chair and a figure four leg lock. Devanto backdrop Cardona on a on a door laying in the corner. Danny hits a ace crusher on I don't know how many chairs were in place. Cardona gives a, a Death Valley driver to Devanto out out of the ring onto a door with cans on it that was bridging the ring and the guardrail. Uh, Cardona hits, I believe it's, they called it the Rough Rider. I think that's the movie he used to call Radio Silence, but Danny kicked out of that. Uh, oh, Mittens eventually comes into the ring and uses a, a baseball bat with firecrackers on it, hits Cardona from behind with it. Demonto splashed, uh, Cardona through a door set up on chairs, and I believe... Cardona kicked out of that. Cardona eventually hit a low blow and used a second second rope rough rider and pinned Danny to win the match. So as Mittens and other members of the ring crew are trying to clean the ring up, 
Out comes the Dominican destroyer Vargas, and he attacks Mittens and other members of the ring crew. But then out comes the one called Manders, and they have an impromptu match right then and there. Vargas started out early with multiple headbutts. Uh, Manders, after a few failed tries, he body slams Vargas. Eventually, the end came when Vargas hits a, a power bomb, enabling Vargas to pick up the win over the one called Manders. Well, Vargas is definitely going places. I mean, he's currently the creator pro wrestling interim champion. He's uh, he's in Wrestle Pro. He's uh, he he's in Pro Wrestling Magic. You know, I would say this guy. You know, I don't know if he's really a bu he's a buzz in on the in those promotions. Maybe on the Northeast or most of the Northeast because I don't know what other promotions he works for right now. I mean, as time goes on, look out for him. Then they went to intermission at that point. Uh, the show resumes with a, ta a mixed tag team match as Yokai, the kick demon, Janai Kai, and Yoya did battle with Brandon and Casey, the Kirks. Now, these two met, uh, these two teams actually did very good. Nice clicking and meshing. Whether it was gelling, clicking, meshing. Maybe that's a new thing. <laughs> very well in their matchup. Uh, there was a great opening sequence between Yoya and Casey. Uh, Brandon at one point suplexed Yoya onto Janai Kai. Uh, oh, <laughs> at one point, I don't know what happened. Brandon had Yoya in his arms. And I don't know if, how, how tall Yoya is, but he looks so small next to Brandon Kirk, who's pretty tall. And he was, like, trying to... I'm not going to say he was, like, holding... Like an adult holding a baby in its arms. But he was, like, doing, a, I guess, the rock a baby spot, we'll call it, I guess. <laughs> and And at that point, all of a sudden, the crowd starts getting quiet. Then the commentators start getting quiet. And even um, Brandon's telling the referee not to hit the mat too loud as he's going to make the three count. And <laughs> as the referee goes, all of a sudden, Yoya like rolls to his side and his left shoulder comes off the mat. <laughs> I was there live. <laughs> Um, I forgot what eventually, eventually Yoya stands up, obviously, or seemingly wakes up. Uh, Kai hits the multiple kicks, or as I refer to them as the speedball kicks that Speedball Mike Bailey's known for. And she hit them on Brandon. Uh, Casey hits, uh, nails Kai with the old Dino Bravo move. Now, no matter where... Where I see wrestling or who's on the show, who wrestles who, someone always pulls that move off. Many, many in the 90s people were calling it the sidewalk slam, but I remember the, as you know, of course, not most of the newbies out there don't even know who Dino Bravo was. Back when uh, the late Gorilla Monsoon was calling the action for Bravo's matches, he referred to Monsoon referred to it as that patented side suplex. But, you know, no matter what you call it, a sidewalk slam or not, but I still call it the old Dino Bravo move. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Brandon hit, I think it was called Psycho Driver 2 on Yoya, but he kicked out. But then he hit, he hit the, what they called Psycho Driver 3 on Yoya and pinned him, enabling the Kirks to defeat Yokai in a very good mixed tag team match. Up next was a match for the IWTV Independent World Championship as the Hardcore Samurai Akira, or the Deathmatch Samurai, challenged the Bulldozer, Matt Tremont. And it seemed like Tremont did more like more wrestling than brawling in this one, it seems. But in the early moments, they were like one of the ropes, giving each other headbots. Akira was hitting, uh, I think, around the apron, and Akira used Kawada kicks. Multiple kicks to the face, for those who don't know. Uh, 
At one point, he, Akira press slammed Tremont off the apron to the floor. Tremont used the air raid crash to counter, I forgot what, what kind of submission hold Akira had. He was really stretching Tremont out. Uh, they had a slug fest in the ring. Tremont hit a Death Valley driver. Then Tremont hit a Lariato. Uh, Akira put on a heel hook. Then it was into the STF. Uh, Tremont eventually grabbed the rope to break the hold. And Tremont eventually hit a second Death Valley driver and pins Akira to win the match and retain the IWTV Independent World Championship. Both men are down. Tremont's got the microphone and he's praising Akira. And he says, thank you for... I forgot what he thanked him for. I was a good match. So Akira leaves the ring. Tremont stands up. He says, he says, now this is where I shoot. And he feels that the IWTV championship is the only championship on the knees that really matters. And, you know, he's put out a, like open challenges to anyone in Canada, Mexico, Canada, Germany, the UK, or Japan. <clears throat> Next up, we had another title match. As we saw... Jose and Joel Maximo, the SAT, a couple of my spot monkeys, challenged uh, Crazy, spelled without an A. I, I apologize if I got his name wrong. And Big Boss Masuja? Blech. Oh, apologies. I messed up that name. The Natural Vibes. And it was for the Dragon Gate, open the Twin Gate title, which was their version of the Tag Team Championship. Good moves by, obviously a good match. I mean, the SAT are in the in the guaranteed great match department. Uh, they started out with multiple dance moves. I forgot if it was Jose or Joel. We was doing dance moves. The commentator said it was bachata. I don't know if it was bachata, merengue, salsa. Sure, it wasn't tango because, you know, they say it takes two to tango. Um, Jose hit a spinning heel kick on Crazy, spelled with a, cap, with a K in front, no A. Joel hit... Uh, Actually put the figure four on Crazy and then put him in an Indian death lock. Uh, Big Boss had multiple shoulder blocks after he got tagged in. He stacked both Maximals on his shoulders for a double Samoan drop. Uh, the Vibes with a uppercut German suplex combo on Joel. Uh, there was a double slug fast with, with both with all four men in the ring. Eventually, the vibes, natural vibes, won the match when uh, Crazy hit a senton while Big Boss hit a top rope splash. Forgot who got pinned, but it was the natural vibes defeating the SAT. And I believe it was the first time the SAT had been defeated since ETU started. Uh, the natural vibes defeat the SAT to retain the Dragon Gate, open the Twin Gate championship. Then it was on to the main event, a TLC match. For a key to the Keys to the East Championship. As we saw, young Dumb and Brooke member Jordan Oliver take on the young prodigy Marcus Mathers in a return bout from their classic match that stole the show back at, um, back at, back at, um, We Don't Belong Here, the one year anniversary show in December. Okay. They had a, uh, slugfest to start the match. Mathers hit a Northern Lights suplex. Then he hurdled the ropes, a hurdle dive over the ropes to the floor. There was a chop fest they had with each other. Oliver was whipped into the ladder in a quarter, in the, set up in the corner repeatedly. Mathers uh, bled after being pushed off the top rope to the floor. Uh, Mathers, Oliver was posted like a status by Mathers on the ring post. Oliver hit a Vader bomb on a ladder that I don't know if the ladder was on on top of Mathers or, or under Mathers. Uh, uh, they exchanged Yakuza kicks. Uh, Mathers hit the Amityville Horror, which they, they called a Samoan driver. Uh, Oliver with a Top rope, D D D threw a table onto the floor that was bridged, uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe a door or a table, bridging the ring to the ring and the apron. Yeah. Uh. 
Eventually, Mathers hits a Kobashi plex. Oliver hit an exploder suplex on a ladder in the corner. Then hit a sit out power bomb. And then a Yakuza kick. Mathers kicked out of all of that after all of that, taking all of that. Mathers, and then he. Actually, I'm sorry, I think he actually power bombed him. No, Mathers power bombed Oliver on two chairs. Oliver kicked out of that. Oliver was at some point, I forgot when, he ended up bleeding. Oliver hit a pile driver off the top rope through a table. Uh, then he did a pile driver in the ring, followed by a clout cutter. Uh, Mathers hit a senton off the ladder through a table and then hit a 450 splash on Oliver on a ladder. No, I'm sorry. No, he did a swanton off the ladder through a table and then Mathers went to the top rope, did a 450 splash onto Oliver, who I believe was laying on a ladder. Marcus Mathers defeats Jordan Oliver and, and to oh, end, the, end the great show. And uh, Ma um, Mathers now has was headed to, uh, literally a, a, a small key by the by ref by the referee, and Mathers said Jordan Oliver is the best in the world right now, and he feels that uh, and he said he's coming for keys to the East champion Masha Slavovich because my understanding this key that Mathers has he can he can exercise it at any given time in the next in the next twelve months, but I don't know how often. Uh, because Masha Slavovich, I don't think she's been on an ETU show since she won the belt back in September at a show in Newark. She wasn't on We Don't Belong Here back in December. Uh, I sure, no, I don't think a return date was announced to the crowd. Um, I sure hope to make the next ETU show. I mean, the problem why I didn't come to this one is because I was so burned out from NYWC Psycho Circus 20 the night before. And, mm, wow. You know, again, this was such a very good show, but there's no way I would have been able to pull this one off, especially with being so burned out from the night before. But for the next ETU, sh for ETU show in the future, um, <sighs> I don't know really who I'd like to see, but, uh, I mean, you know, like I said, no word on the next show date for anybody that's aware or not, or not aware, but I hope to be at the next ETU event because again, even though this promotion is just over a year old already, this is definitely something and hopefully will be around for some time. 